In this video, we will show you how to normalize a spinner. This is actually a very delicate question, and unfortunately, there are infinitely many allowed ways to normalize a spinner. But some normalizations are more useful than others. First off, solutions of the Dirac equation can be written in terms of plane waves, where u and v are four component Dirac spinners. They can be written in terms of two component wild spinners, phi and eta. Now, although phi and eta are conventionally normalized themselves, this does not fix the normalization of u or v. So, how do we choose a normalization? Furthermore, do we use u dagger u or the Dirac adjoint u bar u? Fortunately, we have some constraint. The physical condition that the probability of finding the particle somewhere should be Lorentz invariant. This probability is the integral over d3x over the zero component of the probability current, j mu. We see that the probability is the integral d3x over psi dagger psi. Now d4x is Lorentz invariant, but d3x surely is not, at least as far as boosts are concerned. But here's a quick way to fix this. What if psi dagger psi transformed like the zero component of four vector? Then, similar as to how the dt makes d4x Lorentz invariant, d3x together with psi dagger psi will be Lorentz invariant. Now the only four vector that appears in the bi spinner is the four momentum p. Therefore, psi dagger psi and therefore also u dagger u as well as v dagger v must be proportional to p0, the energy of the particle. The bad news is that there are infinitely many possibilities to make them proportional to the energy. However, some choices are more useful in later calculations than others. The two most commonly used conventions are 2 times the energy and energy divided by mass. The first convention is used by the textbooks by Peskin and Schroeder, Schwartz, Srednitschke, Lankhurst and Blundell, Landau and Lifshitz, as well as Thompson. On the other hand, the second convention is used by Mandel and Shaw, Olsen, and Itzigsen and Zuber. Since there is no obvious better choice, both conventions are widely used. Now what about u bar u and v bar v? They are not independent. In fact, one can find a relation between u bar u and u dagger u, as well as for v. Let's consider the expression u bar gamma mu u. This transforms like a Lorentz vector, so it must be proportional to the momentum, since we don't have any other four vector inside u. We will now modify this equation in two ways. First, we just consider the zero component, which leads to the equation u dagger u is equal to a times the energy. Second, we contract the original equation with the four momentum, which yields u bar p slash u equals a times m squared. Using the Dirac equation, we can replace p slash u with m times u, and can now eliminate a from these two equations. The result is that u bar u is given by mass divided by energy times u dagger u. And for the antiparticle, we have v bar v is equal to minus mass over energy times v dagger v. In summary, using the first convention leads to u dagger u and v dagger v equal to 2 times the energy, u bar u is 2m and v bar v is minus 2m. Using the second convention, we have u dagger u and v dagger v equal to energy of a mass, which makes u bar u equal to 1 and v bar v equal to minus 1. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching.